What is up guys, PK here. Now fair warning, should you at any point throughout this video hear something along the lines of <laughs> then I promise you it's not me, okay? <laughs> I swear to god it's not. Today happens to be one of the days where all of the gymnasium classes are all out celebrating getting fuck shit wasted and wasted shit fucked on god knows fuck what who. So, <laughs> they're all out driving these wagons and getting really, really drunk. But what they don't realize is, you see, think about it. What are they celebrating? Hmm? Thought about that? Think about this. They are celebrating that they're never ever going back to school. But here's the thing, here's what they don't know, <laughs> is that the gymnasium is really just the equivalent of an entrance exam to a further education, which means all of them have either wasted three years of their life on absolutely nothing, or they're totally going back to school. <laughs> but they don't know that. <laughs> Goddamn dumb 19 year olds. Anyways, <laughs> today we're gonna talk about Vermintide and a particular hero. The undisputed, the undefeated, the undechained, unchained. So here we are on the unchained. Now, let's start off by talking about what kind of hero the unchained is. Now, one important thing to note is that the unchained is a high risk, medium reward class. Now, both the other Siennas, in my opinion, actually outperform her overall but that doesn't mean you shouldn't play her now the unchained is extremely rewarding to play and i think if you can play an unchained well you can play almost any other hero and the reason i would say that is because to play unchained you need really good fundamentals you need to learn how to balance your overcharge with your damage and always sort of you you, you want to push it to the max whilst never reaching that threshold. So she's an incredibly good hero at learning how both to balance your overcharge, how to vent a lot, but also she really needs good movement. She needs the right attack combinations in order to really get proper value. And because uh, she's so relentless, because she, she's sort of so unforgiving to play in a lot of situations, I think she's a great hero to get really, really good fundamentals down um, because you simply have to play her, unless you use uh, ab Abandon, uh, then you simply have to play her in a somewhat conservative manner. Now with that being said, her ultimate ability has a cooldown of 120 seconds. It recharges all of your overcharge, regardless of your ulti talent, as soon as you cast your ulti, it removes all of your overcharge. Your hero has a total of 40 overcharge, just with uh, like with any other hero. Half of the damage you take will be transferred into your overcharge. That is to say, if you took 50 damage, you'd get a total of 25 of that would be removed from damage, so you would only take 25 damage. Uh, any further damage reduction would then be calculated from that 25. And the other 25 would go straight into your overcharge. You have a total of 40 overcharge. Uh, things such as natural talent and thermal equalizer would remove from that 25. So if you were to take that 50 damage, 25 in overcharge, that would then be reduced by 20% as well from thermal equalizer. Every time you take damage, you obtain half a second worth of a cooldown. And every time you hit an enemy minion, you get a quarter of a second of your ultimate. Of course, you have her other passive. <laughs> this is pretty important, uh, which increases her power by up to 60%. But that's a melee power buff and not a raw power buff. And there's a distinct difference in terms of how the, uh, the damage calculation is done. So it does not stack multiplicatively with other raw power buff talents in the way uh, enhanced power would with a third raw power buff. Um, so it essentially adds to your base power, which means that you're so that if you have max stacks, right? If you have all stacks, they give 12% melee power each. So once you reach a total of five stacks, you would essentially have 160% base power, and that would be your base from which all the other power buffs would be calculated. Um, what else is there to say? Um, yeah, I think that those sort of get to the fundamentals of the uh, the unchained. So here we are in the keep on the unchained. Now, before we get to the talents, I think it would make sense to first talk about her weapons. Now, here's the thing about weapons and these guides. Quite often, I have to exclude certain weapons, because if I were to go into every single potential build, 
with every single weapon, the video would simply take too long. So I'm gonna have to narrow it down a little bit. And that is not to say that either of the other weapons aren't, uh, aren't viable or can't be played or don't have uh, builds that would function just fine in quick play, but we are gonna narrow it down just a little bit. Now, super quickly, the, the maze is uh, great on paper, slightly underwhelming in, uh, in actual performance, if you ask me. The dagger is kind of off meta. It's not that it, the dagger is one of the best Sienna weapons out there, but for the purposes of the Unchained, I, I, I know, I'm generalizing here, okay? Because you can definitely make a viable build with the dagger, but it's going to be slightly off meta. It's not going to be what the average quick play player is going to enjoy using. So leave aside the fact that it is actually one of her best weapons. Uh, we're also going to put that aside for now. The sword. Uh, I think the sword is actually pretty underrated. Simply because it's sort of... It's overshadowed by the flaming sword. Because why would you use the regular sword? Which you can also play on the Kruber. When you have a flaming sword, right? So again... It's not that you can't use the sword, you definitely can. I have a guide that showcases all of the attack combos with these weapons. Um, but for the context of this video, I think it's going to make sense to focus on the flaming sword and the flaming flail. Now, the crow bill used to be amazing. And again, you can get it to work. It has insane armor damage. I mean, insane armor damage, right? But it also has, as you can see, absolutely no cleave. Like, absolutely none. It's, like, it's essentially like a one-handed axe on steroids. So uh, that's how that works. Then you have the Flaming Sword. Now, the Flaming Sword is great for a couple of reasons, but again, it's going to be very build dependent. Of course, it has the, the sort of amazing effect of its first heavy attack being equal to a shield stagger, which is going to set a bunch of enemies ablaze. But I would really only recommend the Flaming Sword on um, the Unchained in the context of very specific builds that either use things like Enfeebling Flames or maybe Chain Reaction, and Chain Reaction also being fairly off meta. So again, plenty of viable builds with the Flaming Sword, but we have to narrow it down, and that's why today we're going to primarily be focusing on the Flaming Flail when it comes to melee weapons. Now, the Flaming Flail, to me, is the go-to weapon for all things Unchained, and I really, really mean that. There's a couple of reasons why. First of all, it's incredibly versatile. It has pretty good mobility. As you can see, four effective dodges, 15% dodge distance. It has sort of the, your average 90% effective block angle, 0 0.5 and uh, 2.0 multipliers. That's pretty basic or the most common across all of the different weapons in the game. It has four light attacks, the two last of which have the highest armor damage. So that's important to note. And the two first of which have the most cleave and stagger in the light attack combo. Then you'll have the first heavy attack, uh, and the first heavy attack, as you can see here, has a burn dot. It also showcases that it has incredibly little damage and stagger, but really this doesn't show you the full picture because the Flaming Flail's first heavy attack has sort of a so-called explosion effect. And you can sort of see it sometimes when it encounters with a minion. Oof, you see that explosion effect? Now, show me. Let's just uh, cataclysm. Whoops. Boom, right? That should set the minion to cap. There we go. Apparently, it must have crit got a critical hit before. But as you can see, it, it staggers incredibly well. And that is going to be a key part in what I'm going to showcase later on when we're looking at gameplay in regards to how to actually survive on this hero. Because again, when you're fighting a bunch of Chaos Warriors, control is where it's at. Now, you can't stagger every single sort of animation from a Chaos Warrior on Kata. That is to say, if it's all like if a Chaos Warrior is already heavy attacking, then you're not always going to be able, depending on your build, depending on your power charges, depending on a bunch of things, you're not always going to be guaranteed to actually stagger with the first heavy attack. But 99% of the time, versus 99% of minions, not including bosses, your first heavy attack is going to be able to cancel. Uh, and stagger the enemy minion, which is incredibly useful. But there you saw a case where I was unable to stagger him. Um, but then, of course, you also have the second heavy attack, which is uh, incredibly similar, I believe, in fact, identical to the uh, the regular flails heavy attacks. So you already know, assuming you use that weapon at least, you know how that works. It has an incredible amount of cleave, and it's sort of a heavy AoE attack that also staggers really, really well. 
Now, a couple of combos you want to be using with the Flaming Flail is Light, Light, Cancel, Light, Light, Cancel. Again, if you're just finding a bunch of trash, it's up close. Light, Light, Cancel can often be the easiest way to go. It's easy, short, you know, short and easy to remember, right? Um, and simple to sort of perform and execute. Then you have push block attack into double light attack. Now the reason you do that is essentially to skip the two first light attacks, get straight to the third and fourth light attack, but, uh, both of whom have the highest armor damage again of the light attack sequence. You also of course just have heavy heavy, that's a great way to, <laughs> to go as well. You can even go heavy heavy light. So heavy heavy light that also gives you one of the, the two sort of uh, final attacks in that sequence. So that's essentially a quick guide on how to use the Flaming Flail. But of course, movement is gonna be a huge part of this. And I think an important aspect to note is being comfortable with the heavy attack combo, even when you have a bunch of minions up close. That may sound weird, but when you have a decent amount of attack speed, like when you proc switch lane or when you have um, Frenzied Flame active, then actually, even when it seems like you can't get in a heavy attack, Quite often you actually can, um, as you'll hopefully notice when we get to the gameplay. But let's get to talking about talents, because again, talents are pretty damn important. Now I'm not gonna lie, <clears throat> I was gonna release this video yesterday and I had to re-record pretty much the whole thing simply because of a single talent, which we will get to momentarily. But starting off, we got Soul Quench, Reckless Rampage, and Heal Share. Now, depending on your preferences, you, you can go both Soul Quench and Reckless Rampage. Like for example, with the Flaming uh, Sword, you'd be most likely be going Soul Quench. With the Flaming Flail, you could actually be going either, depending on your playstyle. This uh, Reckless Rampage probably being the better for those of you that are less familiar with the Unchained. So if you're a newer um, Sienna player, or in particular a new Unchained player, then I'd be getting Reckless Rampage, simply because it's easier to understand. It's easier to sort of just, okay, amount of enemies hit, that's how much temp HP I'm gonna get. Pretty straightforward. Also important to note that Unchained, as the other CMS, has exactly 40 overcharge in total. And when you're looking at talents like Frenzied Flame, increase attack speed by 50% while at above or high overcharge, that is actually above half overcharge. So you see, I get the, the buff on the center of the screen as soon as I get above 20. So one might think, logically, that it's up here, but it's really just above half. That's high overcharge, and that's going to give you your 15% attack speed. Now, sort of, you're pretty much always going to be getting Frenzy Flame unless you're doing a off meta build. Now, Outburst, again, using a heavy attack, that's going to give you a, um, a buff. That buff is going to be consumed by doing a push, and pushes are also going to ignite enemies on fire. I think it's slightly underwhelming, Outburst. I think it's the worst talent here. Potentially, at least, because then you have chain reaction. Now, chain reaction is not really a chain reaction. That's the big problem with chain reaction. If chain reaction was a chain reaction, then really what it should do is that once an enemy died from a burning fire and exploded, that explosion should also set other enemies ablaze. If that was the case, then it would actually have a chain reaction. But it doesn't, which means there's actually no chain reaction. And because of that, I think it's fairly underwhelming. It's good for clearing hordes, but let's be real, clearing hordes is like Kanamiya, right? That's that's not essentially what you're going for. You don't struggle to do that. So essentially 99% of the time, you're gonna be getting Frenzied Flame. Then we have the level 15 talents, Bulwark, Mainstay, and Enhanced Power. Mainstay and Enhanced Power being the two go-tos here. Personally, I'm a fan of Enhanced Power here, uh, simply because of the raw power buff. Uh, that's going to be great both for your melee damage and for your range damage. So that's what I would be going most of the time. But there's nothing wrong with getting mainstay here either if you are using a weapon such as the Flaming Flail. So I'll leave that up to you. But personally, I'd be getting Enhanced Power. Uh, simply because I feel like it hits better breakpoints on ranged attacks in particular. On level 20, we have Dissipate. Now, Dissipate is the talent in question. Now, if you read, block cost is reduced by 50% when overcharged, and block and attack events overcharge. That sounds pretty simple. But as always, there's going to be a bit of fat shark logic involved here. Now, what I mean by that is any reasonable person who knows how block cost reduction stacks, because that's how it stacks on in literally every other case and scenario, like the old uh, Battle Wizard talent stacked that way, the current aura from the Foot Knight stacks that way, your item properties 
across necklace and uh, your weapon stacks this way. But I looked it up and you should on your screen right now see the magic comment from Fat Shark appear telling me that, uh, oh, that's why things didn't turn out the way I thought they would. <laughs> now, essentially what that's saying is um, the 50% here is calculated separately afterwards, which means if you have a 60% block cost reduction, that really leaves a 40% sort of stamina cost left over, and then it's gonna take 50% off that. Now, that essentially makes the, takes dissipate from like a potentially very viable talent to kind of meh. It's not horrendous, because again, there is definitely still value in the fact that you can overcharge, and you can do like this, boom, and a bunch of your overcharge is gonna disappear. So if you could get that 100% block cost, that would allow you to spam stuff, block, remove all your overcharge, spam stuff again, block, guaranteed, you know, guaranteed that you're not gonna have your block busted. And I feel like that would be enough to sort of justify this talent in certain builds. But as it looks right now, I would not be using it that often. Then we have numb to pain, reduces damage taken by 5% and overcharge generated by blood magic by 16.6% for 15 seconds after venting. Stacks three times. That sounds pretty simple, right? That sounds as if I'm just gonna use a bunch of overcharge, okay. Then I'm gonna vent, okay. Then I should have damage reduction and reduce cost, right? Right, that's what it says. But despite what it says, and I don't know if this is, like either I'm crazy, because I'm definitely used, like, normally I'd be using Conduit. That is my favorite talent here. But I seem to recall Numb to Pain working as intended. In other words, I seem to recall that it works as it's listing, you know, as it says in the talent. But here's the problem. I don't see the buff appearing anywhere. You're supposed to have a buff that has a potential of three charges that you get from vending. But I don't see the buff appear. Or is it just me? Buff manager? Doesn't seem to be here either. Melody power, push arc, attack speed, activate ability pulse. I'm unable to find the actual buff. And whenever I'm vending, I don't appear to actually be getting it. But the way it's supposed to work at the very least, maybe it's a bug on the modern realm, I don't know. But the way it's supposed to work is you're gonna cast, then as you're vending, that's gonna give you uh, a passive buff that you know, can stack a total of three times, and for each stack, it's gonna reduce the cost of doing more overcharge, in other words, casting more spells, um, as well as reduce your damage taken by 5%. Then we have Conduit, increase rate of vending overcharge by 30%, and also reduces the damage you take from vending by 50%. Now, the reason I like this talent is just because it just works. It's just a passive, you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to think about your charges, you just use your vent, and it's effective, you know? It, you're gonna take less damage from vending, and the vending is gonna uh, is gonna go faster, allowing you to cast again faster. It also means that whenever you don't have your ulti uh, off cooldown and you're in a high pressure situation, you're gonna have an easier time doing a quick vent. That's also gonna deal less damage. All of these things combined mean that Conduit is to me by far the best talent on level 20. Although I do feel like both of the two others have potential, but for the the for the context of quick play and for the context of sort of easy to use, straightforward to play with, I think Conduit is going to be the choice for most Unchained players. Because uh, again, you have sort of, if you can play Unchained, you can play any hero, is how I would put it. Because Unchained is in some sense a high risk, medium reward hero. Okay, make no mistake, she's a high risk, medium reward. So. But she's also incredibly rewarding to play because you're constantly trying to balance that high overcharge, you know, sort of pushing it to the limit to get that value um, whilst never trying to step over the line, right? And that means you constantly have to be aware of your power stacks, your overcharge, damage you're going to take because that can push you over the limit. So you, you have to be extra sensitive to, to gas rats, to flaming rats, all these things. So you have a bunch of stuff to juggle in your head, right? And so what you don't need is yet another passive to juggle in your head, although it's not that complex. But nonetheless, Conduit, to me, is just by far the best talent here. Then we have Enfeebling Flames. Now, depending on your build, right, because the two builds that I'm going to talk about today are going to be using Corusation Staff and Bolt Staff. Now, for neither of those two builds, 
would I be using Enfeebling Flames? Because for both of these builds, I am going to be using the Flaming Flail. And if you're going to be using Enfeebling Flames, which, let me just make this clear, is an amazing talent, uh, and definitely up there, uh, definitely viable, definitely a great talent, because it's not just 30% to you, it's essentially the burning enemy deals 30% less damage, so it also applies to your teammates. It's a great talent, but it does require one of two things. Either you need to have a Flaming Sword, possibly a Dagger, but preferably a Flaming Sword, or you need a weapon such as the Beam Staff, the uh, Confrigation Staff, or the Fireball Staff, or the Flamestorm Staff even, although um, let's not even get into that. But you need a Staff or a Flaming uh, Sword that allows you to set large amount of enemy minions ablaze super, super quickly, otherwise it's simply not worth it. So despite the fact that you do have a dot on... Um, on the flail, I don't think it's worth it because it's such a narrow effect. You're usually only lighting a couple of minions on fire at a time. And even though uh, you technically can light a bunch of shit on fire with the Corusation Staff, it's not its primary effect. It's not sort of the effect isn't there when you need it. Like you're gonna, whenever you use the right click, it's usually because you're uh, eliminating a horde or something, right? It's never going to be in those clutch moments when you're fighting and, you know, where you set the stuff on fire and that's when you need the damage reduction. So for these builds, I'm not going to be using it, but it's a great talent. Just make sure that you combo it with the right melee weapon or with the right range weapon, uh, such as a beam staff where you can just whip out your shotgun attack and pfft, everything in front of you is on fire, right? Abaddon. Now, did I just call it Abaddon? I think I did. Abandon. <laughs> Now, Abandon is probably what every new Unchained player should be using. I myself probably used this talent once in my life. I tried it once when it came out and I was like, meh, not for me. Because I've been playing the Unchained for a long last time. And in all that time, the whole point of the Unchained was that, <laughs> you know, I remember a time where the Unchained ulti, okay, didn't save you from overcharging, okay? In the beginning, this hero, Okay? In the beginning, this hero, when you did like this, right, you couldn't even save yourself with your ulti, okay? And I, that's when I was playing on chain, okay? That's... Oh, shit, that... <laughs> that's how long I've been playing on chain, okay? And now the ulti came, which can save you, which was a great update, good mechanic, definitely makes, sort of, makes the hero more balanced and gives, you know, makes it a little bit more versatile. And that was a great implementation, but abandon is just not for me. Because, again, then I just feel like it's a failsafe. And it's a failsafe you might very well need as a new on-chain player, and that's okay. But to me, it's also the worst of the three talents. It's the least value of the three talents, assuming you know what you're doing, right? But don't feel bad about using Abandon. For a lot of you guys, it's going to be the right choice to get into the hero. Then we have Natural Talent, reduces overcharge generated by 10%. I absolutely love this talent. Although 10% may not sound like a lot, it can actually add up to more than you might think. The 10% uh, is, of course, going to be put additively on top of the 20% you have on your staff for a total of 30% less overcharge generated. That goes for both attacks and damage taken. In other words, if I get hit in the face by a Chaos Warrior, that's going to generate 30% less overcharge as well. That's what that talent does. And then we have the ultimate talent, Fuel for the Fire. You're pretty much never, almost never going to be using it. I'm going to exclude it. I wouldn't say never, but almost never. Fuel for the Fire is, in my opinion, the worst of the three. Uh, it gives you 25% raw power, which, you know, is great in theory. I mean, you can ulti and then you can throw a bomb. Sure, it's all very great. But I don't feel like it really plays into very much. You already, like, you're, you're going to be using the ulti to get rid of your overcharge. So you already had a bunch of melee power, right? So sure, you're going to get the extra range power. But I don't feel like that power exchange is really worth it. And really, all you need to do to get to the same melee power level would be a couple of light attacks, right? And then you're back up to the equivalent. Wildfire... Wildfire is absolutely amazing, primarily because it's the only one of the talents that allow you to stagger bosses. In other words, it's the only one of the talents that's going to allow you to push stuff off ledges uh, in similar fashion to Oiwasuk on the Iron Breaker. It's the only talent that allows you to actually stagger bosses, turning it into more of sort of a, uh, a mercenary ulti-ish. Uh, that also saves your overcharge, obviously. Lastly, we have Bomb Bomb. Now, that's, of course, the more supportive choice, but it's also, I'd say it's it's a great choice for those newer players who struggle to generate temporary HP and need to vent a lot, um, and perhaps aren't used to doing it at the right times. 
Because again, what it essentially does is it, again, it turns your ultimate into... It's sort of, if you combine these two talents, you would pretty much have a mercenary ulti, right? So that's how that works. Here you get the stagger, here you get the heal, and the only difference really being that here you also have, of course, a really badass looking flaming effect, which is great at sort of clearing trash around you. So that's obviously an, an added value source as well. And I sort of switch in between these two. I think they're both great. They both have their place. Wildfire obviously being the more aggressive of the two. So I assume that's what 99% of you are going to go since I've convinced you to not take Abandon. <laughs> Take Abandon if you're a new player. If you're trying Unchain for the first time, definitely take Abandon. Uh, but if you're more a seasoned player, I would suggest getting either of these two. So you could, for example, you could be getting Enfleeping Flames, then you could be switching out this staff with a Beam Staff. That'd be one way to go, again, because then you have... Whoops, that's not the kind of minions we need here. Then you have a Shotgun Attack, set everything on fire. That works regardless of the type of minion you're facing, really. It could be a bunch of Berserkers. Oops, they're all on fire. That means now they all do 30% less damage, right? So in that scenario, Enfeebling Flames would be the right choice. Natural Talon would be the right choice, in my opinion, if you're using something like uh, the Chorization Staff, or potentially when you're using the Bolt Staff, again, because the Bolt Staff has no added dot. Moving on to uh, item properties. Block cost, crit chance, Swiss Lane, as always, pretty standard, pretty basic. You could, in theory, be getting Opportunist if you want to stagger those, uh, those Chaos Warriors, but for the context of Quick Play, I'd always be getting Swift Slaying, if I'm being perfectly honest. Then we have the uh, Corization Staff. Again, you could be getting Thermal Equalizer. You could also be going for a Barrage build. Um, again, if you're using the Fireball Staff, I used to absolutely love Chaos Infantry and Barrage as uh, my go-to Fireball Staff. Uh, Crit Chains, Power versus Chaos, that's another option where you're going for the extra critical hits. Th there's a bunch of options depending on which specific breakpoints you're trying to hit. And of course, that also plays into whether or not you're going to be using Enhanced Power. Now, again, there are so many breakpoints we could go into, each of which will depend on Barrage stacks. They're going to depend on whether or not you have Enhanced Power. They're going to depend on how many pellets hit. They're going to depend on a lot of different things. So uh, there is a breakpoint cal calculator you can use if you want to get into the really nitty-gritty specifics because you also have to calculate in dot values. And sort of essentially what I'm trying to tell you is breakpoints for Sienna are really, really cancer to, to sort of to actually get at in a meaningful manner. Of course, it depends on the weapon. The ball staff, pretty straightforward, right? You're going to be getting Chaos Infantry as well as Thermal Equalizer. As for the core station staff, I like to use Chaos Infantry as well, but I haven't actually done the math to calculate if that is the perfectly optimal situation for the core station staff in the context of the Unchained. So you'll have to hold me up on that. But it makes sense in my head, at least. So, <laughs> then we have the necklace, health, block cost, dark skin. Now, as for the charm, I'd be going power versus chaos, attack speed, and either decanter or proxy. I'm not a huge fan of concoction on the unchained. I wouldn't say that it's unviable, but I feel like it's very hard to get the value you need to get from your melee attacks or ranged attacks for that matter in a context of five seconds. So the only argument would be that it's because that way you can find more potions that can recharge your ultimate, but I don't feel that quite justifies it uh, in her case. Trinket, crit chance, stamina recovery, and either explosive ordinance or shrapnel, depending, again, that's a matter of preference in my opinion, whether you prefer getting that uh, extra 20% damage or the 50% area of attack. Obviously, you're always going to be running curse resistance if you're playing legend or lower, like I've said in every other quick build guide, that is definitely uh, necessary and preferable, and I'd be going for stamina recovery over crit chance if I were you, but I'll leave that to you. You could also be getting the stamina, uh, curse resistance and crit chance. It works if you're playing legend and you know what you're doing, then it's not like that's an issue, right? And yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the builds. And let's get into some gameplay. Well, let's take a look here. Now, one of the important aspects of using the Flaming Flail is really to understand the different attack combos. Now, there's a couple uh, we can talk about here. Now, but before we get to that, we're just going to clear this Chaos Patrol real quick. <laughs> now, obviously, with the Corrosation Staff, it just absolutely gets annihilated. And despite the fact that I didn't get a lot of the last hits, I can guarantee you that most of the damage there came straight from the Corrosation Staff. A lot of it, at least. And we're gonna have some interesting clips here momentarily. 
Get a bunch of assassins. Whoops. Now here, the uh, stacker ult came into play. That was a mistake. Didn't hit there. Really, the value of Unchained is playing sort of a very fine balancing act. Now, make no mistake, the thing about the Unchained, right, is that she's a high-risk, medium-reward hero. That's just a fact. I wish that wasn't the case, but that is the case. So in order to get as much value as possible, you obviously want to be as high overcharge as possible, preferably always over half overcharge in order to get that extra attack speed. Now, with the Flaming Flail in particular, there are two important things to understand. The highest armor damage comes from the third and fourth light attack. Okay, the third and fourth light attack. Now, one way to shortcut to those is to use a push block attack into a double light attack. So, push block, double light. Push block, double light. That's going to get you those two high armor attack hits. And then, of course, you have the light attack. Now, the light attack combo is generally what you're going to be using versus hordes. Some of the time, because you also have the heavy attacks. Now, uh, the Flaming Flail is very similar to the Flail in a lot of ways. But the thing about the first heavy attack, and the first heavy attack is the one that sort of comes from above and gets thrown down downwards, and that attack has an incredible amount of stagger. An incredible amount of stagger. It has sort of an explosion effect that isn't really listed in the armory in the same way that a, a shield bash isn't listed in, in sort of accurately, right? So it's not that what it says is wrong, it's just that it's only part of the picture. So really the first heavy attack is absolutely amazing. And utilizing the heavy attack combo is a huge part of how to stay alive on the Unchained. Now that might sound weird, but sort of dodge dancing with the two heavy attacks and using them at the right times is really a huge part of playing the Unchained. Ouch, that really hurt. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I would have exploded there if I didn't have the uh, the the reduction to uh, um, to my overcharge. But anyways, can, do you see how you can sort of control Chaos Warriors with the heavy attack combo? Because the second heavy attack also has a lot of stagger, although in a similar uh, in a different way. So the stagger on the second attack just comes from the attack matrix, whilst the first heavy attack, as I said, has this explosion effect. You can see which also ignites the target. It's almost like a very narrow shield bash. I don't know how else to put it. It's like, it's like a very narrow shield bash, the best way I can put it. Now the great thing about the Corusation Staff, we're gonna be switching weapons for the next for the next game, but the great thing about the Corusation Staff, in my opinion, on the Unchained, is just the speed at which you can get to high overcharge, right? Um, it, it, it's kind of insane. You, you, I think you can perform a total of nine side attacks, which is a lot, with the Corusation Staff, before you're at maximum overcharge. Now that's if you do include the uh, reduction on the weapon itself, as well as the 10% from, uh, from the talent. But all in all, I like the Corrosation Staff, both because it gives... I don't, I don't know, I just... I, I like placing those, like, flaming... Uh, things, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's sort of a high IQ weapon, right? You want to place them at the right at the right time. You can divert hordes into certain positions. And also, the, the sort of... The potential value is really, really high if you can control a boss, for example, or, or you know, a Chaos Patrol like you saw earlier. Um, then, then the potential value of the Corsation Staff is incredibly high. Not to mention that the light attacks are so satisfying when you have monks charging at you. Where it struggles is mostly with things like Stranglers, where a lot of the attacks will sort of go around, and so often you can find yourself having to take like three attacks to kill a, a Strangler, which is where it struggles. Now, the Unchained as a hero this does struggle in a fight like this, and you want to be extra careful. Now, I seem to recall that I am about to get wrecked. <laughs> and when I say get wrecked, really, I wasn't prepared for the death rat to switch aggro right around here. I went for the revive, I didn't have my ulti ready, 
This is obviously where a talent such as Abaddon would have come in and saved the day. Which is why, again, I recommend that if you are a new or unchained player, then you should go for Abaddon. For those of you that don't know what Abaddon does, um, because I didn't really showcase that, it essentially, uh, when you overcharge, so, you know, when you're about to explode, it will start trading uh, your health or cooldown reduction until your ultimate is ready so that you can cast your ultimate and you don't have to die, essentially. Which is very nice. Very nice. Not dying is very nice. Cannot not stress this enough, folks. Always go where he's going to be, not where he is, so that you are there when he arrives. So many people, I, I still see, I have a whole video on it, but so, uh, I still see so many people that chase him around and never actually get to him. Prepare your potion, you drink it, and you go absolutely berserk on it. Boom! That's how you're getting good DPS. Now, one of the reasons that the Unchained struggles when you go to modded difficulties, and one of the reasons you will very rarely see anyone play high level weaves or Onslaught so on and so forth with the Unchained, and you can, I'm not saying you can't, I'm just saying the problem is that your overcharge doesn't scale with the difficulty. Now here I just joined the game, I didn't die, I just joined and was dead. Um, and because it doesn't scale, that, that means, especially in weaves, when you get to the highest levels of weaves, you simply just overcharge, explode from like a single attack. Like even, it doesn't even have to be an attack, like the death weaves, the ghosts that come out, they will just one shot trigger your overcharge, but you know, it's suboptimal at the very best. <laughs> now, the advantages of the bolt staff, of course, is the special killing and sort of the, the long range capabilities. It is way better at long range, it's way more consistent when it comes to taking out, again, stranglers, assassins. It's more of a precision weapon. Whereas the Corusation Staff is more of a shotgun-like thing. And the great thing about the Bolt Staff is it also has the capability of going high overcharge fairly quickly. And I guess so does the Beam Staff with the, the shotgun attack. And again, the Beam Staff is also totally fine, but I think most people agree that the, the Bolt Staff or the new Corusation Staff is the, the current meta, but nothing wrong with the Beam Staff. You can totally use that if that is your preferred staff as well. Want to make that clear. Now, an important aspect of playing the Unchained is what you're about to see here, which is knowing when you have to be very careful. Now, in a moment, I'm about to uh, get overcharged, cast my ulti. If I recall correctly, at least. You see there how using uh, oops, how using sort of the the over uh, the overhead attacks, the heavy attacks is what I meant to say. Using the uh, the heavy attacks is really a huge part of playing her uh, playing her well. You can really control a huge amount of minions with the heavy attack combo. Obviously, to get the maximum value, you want to be as high overcharge as possible, as much of the time as possible. But you can only do that. Whenever you you have your ultimate of cooldown. So I remembered wrong there. I didn't use my ulti, so forget what I said there. 
But uh, the reason I could play it so aggressively with such high overcharge again is because my ultimate was ready to use. And so whenever you then use your ulti and it's on cooldown, if you don't have the talent Abaddon, that's when you need to be a little bit more careful. And we're gonna get, get a great example of what being very careful looks like in, in the next uh, third and final game. So, uh, so don't worry. <laughs> When it comes to the heavy attacks, I think it takes a bit of trust to use the heavy attack sequence. What do I mean by that? Often when you have minions all the way up in your face, it will look like you don't have time to use the heavy attack combo, but really you do. Okay? That, 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 that's the best way I can put it. You need a little bit of faith in the heavy attack combo, okay? Because it really often it looks like there's no way I can use my heavy attacks here. More often than not, you actually can. I don't know how else to put it really. So have a little bit of faith in your heavy attack sequence. If you're a new Unchained player, try it out. Try letting that heavy attack roll. Because most of the time, it, it will go through successfully and stack all of the enemies. Obviously, this is the power of uh, one of the powers of the uh, the ball staff. Yeah, yeah, the ball staff. Ball staff, very good. Yes, yes. So satisfying. Oh, mm. there is few things more satisfying in this game than just lining up those headshots on a, on an approaching port. Like it is, it is. Am I the only one? Is it just? Mm, it's like it's like a small orgasm here. Like, right. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry, guys, but like, come on, come on. I can't be the only one who goes. Mm, mm. I'm obviously trolling, but you get you get the idea. Obviously, when you have a boss, you always want to go for the minions first. I, I think I thought that dead chaos warrior there was uh, was alive for a moment. She was like almost standing up. Now, obviously, you are a little bit more susceptible to things like gas, AoE attacks, um, flaming rats, all of that. That's really one thing you want to watch extra much out for on the, un on the Unchained. I seem to recall that I was really, like, I was hyped up this day for this game. Like, I seem to recall that I was really, I was on, on point. Um... This is actually two of the games I played today, but th this game was uh, like a month ago or something, and I just recall being like really, really fresh, on point. Getting all them special kills. Ah! Get wrecked, motherfucker! Ah. Farming all of those sweet, sweet green circles. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit disappointed in my team here. <laughs> a little bit disappointed. Just a little bit. Not yet. But, uh... The thing about this boss fight is it can be very, very hard. Especially without invisibility. To carry.
Using that push attack into double light. Getting in some damage there. Preparing for the center. Getting those fully charged bolts. there I just I, I don't know I just seem to recall that game uh, I was like really sad that we lost for lullers Shots. Fighting that we needed to hit the threshold. Perhaps that was a mistake. And this was a fairly unlucky spot where we got a lot of gas warriors. I accidentally. Get my uh, uh, activated my own uh, overcharge there. Oops. To point it myself, I got hit by one of the. Uh, we managed to clear it all out. Of course, and for the ultimate cancer part of the fight. You really want to time when you get punched versus this guy, in order to sort of sometimes if you if you're trying to avoid getting sort of punched and pushed back, then what happens is you get punched back at the exact wrong time. So sometimes it's better to just let him punch you out so that you can move back in in between the explosions. Sure, we had it. We were doing so well. Oops. Couldn't really go for rest there. Now I was the last person standing. Managed to get the elf off. And I got overcharged right there. Ah. 
I was kind of sad, not gonna lie. That was kind of sad. Last but not leastly. I love this stacker from the first heavy attack. It's just amazing. Here we're back to the conversation staff. I seem to recall that we're about to see me, uh, my brain, just, uh, like, uh, what's it called, a brain fart? Yeah, a brain fart. <laughs> Actually, two of them, I believe, in, in, in this single game. Now, I hadn't, hadn't no, like, for some reason, I, it hadn't crossed my mind that the Witch Hunter Captain had died, right? If it had, I would have obviously given him my health pot. And then right around here... Here it is. Bro, can I uh, get, the, get heal? the heal? Get get heal? Looks at health bar. Oh yeah, of course. Oh shit. <laughs> like, bro. Whoops. Yeah, I'm not gonna go for that revive. Rightfully so. Here's another instance of just showcasing the core station staff and the value. Again, he can sort of stack at them, keep them inside the the. The flaming fire. Pew. And boom, no more cast patrol. Another like, oh, I was just not. I was walking around with that bear. And I was just, I was just not prepared for the fact that right behind there, like, na 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 na. Wait, what? Oh shit. Love having a speed pot on this hero, you just go completely nuts. Now, obviously, monks can be a huge issue, you want to watch out for those. But this comes down to experience, just when you can and cannot attack in, in sort of these close up instances. I'm not gonna lie, I'm so shit scared of Stranglers sometimes when I have the conversation staff. Sometimes it's the year and you're never sure if that second attack is gonna be enough or if it's gonna need a third. And using this strength pot here to just burn the Storm Fiend down in no time. See that assassin that's about to jump? Boom! Aha. Skip it. I'm not gonna. Ah. Also, also, this is so satisfying. You can just remove a whole hard wave with the fire. Now this is gonna be a great example <laughs> of when you realize that oh shit I am high overcharge and I have no ulti, then then you need to default to dodging and moving. Okay. Now I try try to uh, what's it called? Play play what I preach. I guess is one way to put it since it's gaming related. Play what you preach. Okay. So what I mean by that is I always tell people that. Really, only one person should go for the chains while the rest stay and fight. And since the dwarf is in front, I was gonna let him do the chains and I was just gonna stay and fight. Normally, I'm the one who does the chains. Um, but here, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna let him do it. Unfortunately, he got grabbed. Um, which is fine. Shit happens, right? Um, but then you. Then I was fighting here a bit and I thought, you know, you know what, this is taking too long, right? Tried to push some stuff down here. Unfortunately, that didn't get pushed down uh, as intended. And then I had a bunch of my. This is exactly why you should not do what I just did. Okay. 
That's exactly why only one person should go for the chains, because otherwise, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, thankfully, I got rest, and unthankfully, I got pushed down and shit fucked again moments later. Because I hadn't seen the monk that came behind me. Ah! And so that's the danger of the Unchain, right? The, the, in assuming you don't have abandon, it is a balancing act. Especially when you have eight monks in your face. So you always want to tr try the best that you can to have your ulti off cooldown, so that you can have high overcharge, so that you can go crazy, right? And then, of course, whenever the opp opportunity presents itself, you use your ulti, so that you can get value of all the extra overcharge, you can get the value from pushing a boss off a ledge, you can get the value from saving a teammate, that's when you want to use your ultimate. Or, of course, when you accidentally get hit, in other words, when you fail your, uh, your Berserker Rampage, um, and you get forced to use it, that's of course also when you use it. But that should uh, go without saying. Now, this is what I'm talking about, right? Ouch. I overcharge. I thought, you know what? Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> that was essentially my, uh, my thought there. And I think that was uh, the right move. Ouch. This is uh, very precarious. Not gonna lie, that was some good movement right there. That was a narrow, very narrow window to dodge past. This almost went sideways. <laughs> I was not supposed to drop down there. That was my mistake. Living on the edge here. <laughs> Really, what I think this also that was a 200 IQ move right there. But really, what I think this all comes down to, right? At least a lot of it. Playing a good unchained. If you can play a good unchained, then I think you can play a good almost anything. And and the reasoning being that playing a good unchained is all about the fundamentals. You don't really have a set, like you want to be high overcharge, yet that's also what's dangerous, right? You don't have any movement in your ultimate. You have nothing to sort of save your ass for you. I think playing a good over, uh, unchained, again, because you have to vent at the right times. You want to be high overcharge. You have to vent at the right times. You have to keep caps on your ultimate. When is it on, off cooldown? When is it uh, on cooldown? And all of these things combined with the fact that you don't really have any external mobility modifiers or career ability to help position yourself is what makes me think that playing a good Unchained really comes down to the good core fundamentals. Uh, it's things like knowing your attack combos, knowing how to dodge dance, knowing when you have to block, knowing when you have to vent, knowing when you have to go for the stagger hit, knowing when to recognize that window of opportunity in which to go full mad lad mode and extract the maximum value from your passive melee power. So all of these things combined is what really makes me think that if you can play Unchained well, you can play almost any hero well. And the things you learn whilst playing her it's going to translate to a lot of other aspects of the game because she really does have a conservative nature and she is certainly a very high skill hero to master on the highest difficulties. Um, anyways, I have linked a bunch of builds down in the pinned comment slash description, whichever one of the two, pick one. Um, and regardless, that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. This video was a lot of work. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.